Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Tominator, and with the 2018 Mr. Olympia now just around the corner, uh, it's less than a month away, I figured it would be a good time to make a predictions video, especially considering we've been lucky enough to catch most of the top guys in guest posing form just four or five weeks out. So the way I'm going to go about this uh, may be a little unorthodox because we're not going to go and do this in a standard countdown fashion. I'm just going to show clips of my top 10 picks in random order and I'll talk about how I think each guy will fare come September. Okay, so let's take a look at the names we're working with here first. This is the official competitor list taken from MrOlympia.com, and as some of the more savvy bodybuilding fans among you may notice, this list is not up to date. I know that Nick's Strength and Power and Zem Fitness, and I'm sure some other bodybuilding channels have already reported that four names in this sidebar here are, will definitely be competing in this year's event. Uh, namely Josh Wade, um, Justin Rodriguez, Sergio Oliva Jr., and uh, where is he? Alexis Rivera. Okay, so other than Alexis Rivera, who qualified by winning the Tampa Pro just a couple weeks ago, I'm not sure how these other channels were able to confirm the other three guys who qualified on points, um, because you would assume, just based on this, it would be Wade, um, Rodriguez, and Akeem. I guess Akeem's decided to sit out. Brandon must have also said so, but according to this, there's no indication. So, uh, you know, maybe it was some announcement made on social media or something, and I'm just kind of out of the loop. But uh, regardless, it doesn't really matter too much for the purposes of this video because I don't see any of these guys here cracking the top 10 anyway. No disrespect to them. It's just such a stacked lineup this year. So without further ado, let's jump into this. And why not start off with a bang? I'm sure many of you were impressed, just as I was, by this recent guest posing appearance by the, the prodigy Brandon Curry. And there's good reason to be hyped and optimistic about Curry's chances this year because he looked sensational, man. Training in Kuwait with the Camel Crew over the last couple of years has done the, the guy wonders. They completely rejuvenated his career and he just continues to make improvements. What jumps out to me the most here is those lats. Like, holy cow, man, just look at how they pop out like that. He definitely seems to have added some size there, and his V-taper is now easily among the best in the entire lineup. So Brandon's going to be very dangerous in poses like the front lat spread and front and back double biceps. Now, for what it's worth, I felt he kind of got shafted last year when the judges had him in eight. I honestly believe that that wasn't really a fair placing for him and that based on prejudging, where they had him posing neck and neck right next to Dexter, that he was in a dogfight for fourth. So surely he, should have, uh, he shouldn't have ended up any lower than fifth or sixth. But that's the politics of the IFBB for you. Half the battle, it seems, is having a good track record because the guys who consistently win shows and place well tend to get the benefit of the doubt, even when they're slightly off. And since Brandon hadn't really proven himself up until this point, I feel the judges kind of overlooked him. But based on what we're seeing here, it would be monumentally disappointing if he didn't crack the top six this time around. So if he manages to hold on to this level of size and fullness while dialing in the separation and definition a bit, he should easily take fifth and could potentially be even higher. But that's a round where I would expect him to wind up this year. All right, next up is the current Arnold Classic champion, William Bonac. I actually have Bonac being the one to push Phil this year more than anybody, even Big Rammy, who we'll get to a little later. But yeah, it's lucky for Phil that William isn't another three or four inches taller, or the seven-time Mr. Olympia's reign would be in serious jeopardy. As it is, I don't think Bonac can oust Phil Heath just yet because he's essentially like a smaller, more compact version in terms of the completeness and the 3D muscle bellies he brings. And all else being equal, bigger is better when it comes to the Mr. Olympia contest. Plus, Phil automatically has a significant edge as the defending champ. So, no, I don't predict any upsets this year. But make no mistake about it, Bonac's detail and muscle separation is second to none. He's right on par with Phil in that area. Plus, the thickness of his back and lower lats is simply Kai Green-esque. And his arms and legs will be among the very best in the show as well. In 2017, many people felt that William deserved to take second instead of Big Rammy. Hell, go check the scorecard. Even the judges had him ahead after prejudging. But this year, I think he will indeed move up and clinch that runner-up spot. Worst case scenario, I still don't see this guy slipping out of the top three. He's just too good. All right, so here's a guy who many people are already writing off. Well, it's true he slipped up a bit in 2017, and it is concerning that he appears a little downsized heading into this year's contest. I still expect Sean Roden to finish comfortably within the top 10. 
He's simply too genetically gifted and consistent to write off just yet. It should be noted that this footage is from last year during a 2017 post-Olympia photo shoot, as I wasn't able to find any good recent uh, guest posing footage, but wanted to use this as a reminder to those who have forgotten what he's capable of. Remember that here is a guy who finished as the second best bodybuilder in the world just two years ago. Plus, he's been third three times since 2012 and has never fell outside the top five since then. So he's quietly established himself as one of the most consistent pros competing today and should not be taken lightly. If Roden manages to regain his tiny waistline and otherwise replicates the same package he brought last year, watch out, folks. He's still a threat to the top five or six for sure. As it is, however, I do see him sliding down a couple of spots. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up in 7th or 8th this year, uh, given his apparent lack of size and conditioning several weeks out. But speaking of consistency, who better to talk about than the Blade? The seemingly immortal Dexter Jackson just keeps holding on despite being almost half a century old. I definitely expect him to maintain his position in the top 6 no matter what, uh, but with all the hungry new talent coming up, I think the old guard are finally on their way out, and that means Roden and Dexter. Especially given his symmetry issues with the arms, which has become really glaring in the last year, uh, if that's not corrected in four weeks' time, his placing is going to suffer, mark my words. Uh, Dexter's midsection has also been increasingly problematic over the past couple of years, and it has to be said his quads are subpar compared to the rest of the top six. Bottom line is, I think he's in for a struggle and just don't see him bettering last year's fourth place finish. It might sound blasphemous to doubt him at this point, but realistically, I don't think there's anywhere he can go but down, and so I'd slot him in at number six. On the plus side, though, his legs do look marginally bigger than usual here, and likewise in some recent progress picks, but we'll see how that translates come contest day once he's dried out. So with Dexter and Roden likely on the decline, that leaves room for the likes of Brandon Curry and Rolly Winkler to step up. And I do expect both these guys to improve on their placings from last year. I could honestly see Rolly landing as high as fourth, maybe even challenging for third if he comes in super ripped like he did at the Arnold Classic Australia. This dude is just muscle packed on top of muscle and all of it round and full to bursting. We all know he's got the biggest and best arms in the business, but the biggest question with Rolly Winkler these days is can he keep his midsection in check? If he manages to do that and shows up with separated quads and striated glutes, I mean, watch out, people. Given his recent contest history, I'd say Rolly's poised to make a major splash this year. Plus, judging from this posing footage, it looks like he's even brought up his lower back as well, which was probably his biggest weak point, as his back double bicep there was looking more formidable than ever. So yeah, Rolly Winkler is definitely one of the top guys to watch out for. Okay, so I could not find any recent guest posing footage of Phil, and this training clip is super short, but it really doesn't matter because all we need to say when it comes to the gift is this. If Phil Heath comes in exactly the same as last year, but without the gut, it's over. Just forget about it. Hell, he doesn't even need to be 100%. If he's even 90%, there's still nobody who can take him out. So if he does his homework like he usually does, it's pretty much a done deal. So I predict that he will win another title and tie the record held by Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman. Okay, let me add one minor addendum to that last statement, because Big Rammy at 100% can defeat Phil, and he's pretty much the only one who can. But as history has shown, that's pretty much theoretical at this point, since we've never seen a 100% Big Rammy. It's the same thing every single year, guys. And while he did make major strides in 2017 by coming in more conditioned than we'd ever seen him before on an Olympia stage, and was rewarded accordingly, it wasn't enough. He still doesn't have the necessary detail through the back or the separation through the thighs, nor the overall balance to match Phil. So while he can obviously crush him on size and dominate the entire lineup with his massive structure and poses like the front lat spread, he's going to need to showcase more definition and muscle maturity in order to become the next Mr. Olympia. And when it comes to Rami, I'm still not confident in his ability to show up conditioned, it's harder for the huge mass monsters like Rami and Rolly to get shredded while maintaining all that size, so in that sense I'd be less surprised if he came in worse shape than last year and dropped a spot or two than I would be if he actually dethroned Phil Heath. So right now I see him finishing around 3rd or 4th, but we'll see. With Rami perhaps more so than any other bodybuilder, it all comes down to how dry and conditioned he is on game day. But as I said already, I'm betting more strongly on William Bonac this year because unlike Rami, he has shown that he knows how to nail his conditioning every show he enters. Cedric McMillan is another wild card when it comes to the conditioning. 
Just like Big Ramy, he's never really nailed it, and he often comes in off, which is a shame because Cedric at 100% would be an automatic top 5, probably even a top 3 threat. So he's a chronic underperformer, especially at the Olympia. Last year, he mistimed it badly and barely placed 10th. Sean Ray likened his physique to a dirty or dust-covered Lamborghini. I mean, you can see the beautiful lines underneath, but it's just lacking that polish, those finishing touches. And I thought that that was a perfect analogy for Cedric McMillan. That said, this year I am expecting him to do a little better because I can't see him coming in that off two years in a row. But still, I'm, hes I'm hesitant to put him any higher than 8th because the lineup is just so stacked. Nathan DeAsha is one of the biggest names in this new generation of open division bodybuilders. He took 7th in 2017 and won the 2018 New York and Cali Pros as seen here back in May. So he's got tremendous potential, but in my opinion his high lats and mediocre back are going to hold him back, no pun intended, and for that reason I think he's going to be hard pressed to make much progress this year. Even though I'm sure he's made some improvements since last year, the rest of the field has too, and therefore I think DeAsha will pretty much stand pat around that 7th spot. Alright, and this is my final pick to round out the top 10. We're talking about Juan Diesel Morel. And this one was the hardest position to settle on because there's actually around five guys or so who could easily squeeze into the top 10 if they really peak and some of these other more gifted athletes slip up and miss the mark. I'm looking at you, Cedric. So if that happens, two or even three of these bodybuilders could all sneak their way into the top 10. So the first is Juan Morel, but the others are Charles Griffin, Steve Kuklo, Michael Lockett, and Lucas Osladil. All five of these dudes have proven they can win big shows and achieve outstanding conditioning, uh, especially Lucas Osladil, Kuklo, and Morel. Originally, I actually had Charles Griffin in 10th because I feel like he's the most genetically gifted of the lot, but the reason I ended up giving the edge to Juan is because he's simply bigger than all of them and can come in just as conditioned as anybody. Even though his legs are lagging, uh, Griffin's aren't that exceptional either, and Lockett also has weak bow-legged thighs. Kuklo and Osladil both have a good set of wheels, true, but upstairs Juan has the ability to overpower them with his massive back, chest, and delts. Another point in his favor is that he easily has the best and most defined set of abs of this group, though admittedly I don't think that counts for much at all in the eyes of the judges. Bottom line is that even though I prefer the physiques of Griffin, Lockett, and Kuklo, I gotta give the edge to the larger Juan Morel here. So that's my picks for the top 10 at this year's Mr. Olympia competition. Obviously, this is mainly just guesswork this far out because, like always, it's going to depend on who comes in shape that weekend and who doesn't. And of course, that can all change on a day-to-day -day basis or even hour-to-hour -hour as these guys deplete, dry out, carb up, and perform whatever other dark magic chemical manipulations they do behind the scenes to get show ready. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and let me know if you agree. Otherwise, you can voice your picks in the comments below. So until next time, I'm the Tominator signing off, and I'll be back.